And once again, welcome back to Philly Sports Spotlight. I'm Phil Anderson. You know, this past weekend, the Eagles held an open training camp uh, practice, rather, at Lincoln Financial Field. The theme of the afternoon, Alumni Day, where they brought back uh, numerous Eagles alumni. Those receiving some of the loudest cheers, Brian Dawkins, Brian Westbrook, and believe it or not, this guy right here, Donovan McNabb. Yeah, there were a few boos, but uh, for the most part, Donnie Mack, well-received. Uh, Donovan actually had a press conference yesterday with Eagles owner Jeffrey Lurie. He retires as an Eagle, but on September 19th, the team will not only induct him into their Hall of Fame, but also retire his number. With that said, I'd like to defer to our resident football expert, Ken Dunnick, who was in studio today. And, you know, you and I have gone on and on about Donovan McNabb and his career. There's no doubt he has the credentials to be in the Eagles Hall of Fame, but is he pro football Hall of Fame worthy? Well, you and I have talked about this a lot, Phil. I mean, certainly it's right for Donovan to retire as an Eagle. I mean, he's one of the all-time greats of the franchise and wore the uniform for uh, about 10, 11 seasons, I believe. And uh, I think it's, uh, it was a great tribute to him yesterday to have him uh, retire as a Philadelphia Eagle. I don't really know what the rush is to rush these guys into the Eagles Ring of Fame or to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's got a great body of work. I do think uh, that, you know, we should let a little bit of time lapse before we induct him with the likes of Brookshire and Retzlaff and, you know, all the Eagle greats that are up there right now. Is he pro football Hall of Fame worthy? I really don't think so. Okay. And the reason is because although he had some above average statistics, his reputation was that he came up small in big spots. And he did it over and over again. He did, did it in two NFC Championship games. He also did it in the Super Bowl. And uh, I think uh, unless you have overwhelming statistics like a right. Dan Marino, I don't think uh, if you don't win a Super Bowl, you should, you should make it in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, see, that's why we ask you. That's why we bring you here because you say it from the heart. And you, I, say, and, and you, and you say what you mean. And I absolutely do. And, and, and you like Donovan, right? I know, I know a lot about not making it to the Hall of Fame. All right, well, enough so. about that. Listen, you played pro football. Stop whining, okay? There's a lot of us that never had that chance. Plus, you got three rings. Now, yes, Donovan may not have credentials to get to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but Ken, these seven inductees in 2013 do. Former Eagle Chris Carter hauled in 1,101 receptions for 13,899 yards and 130 touchdowns during his 16-year career, while also recording eight straight 1,000-yard seasons. Curly Culp, a defensive stalwart for 14 years with the Kansas City Chiefs and Houston Oilers, was a six-time Pro Bowler and former NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Larry Allen, a member of the NFL's All-Decade teams of the 1990s and 2000s, earned first team All-Pro honors seven straight times in 14 seasons with the Dallas Cowboys and San Francisco 49ers. Big Jonathan Ogden, the first ever draft pick of the Baltimore Ravens, excelled 12 seasons as a strong pass protector and run blocker. In addition to six All-Pro teams, Ogden, an 11-time Pro Bowler, and selected to the NFL's All-Decade team in the 2000s. South Jersey native Dave Robinson, a vital cog in Vince Lombardi's tough Green Bay Packers defenses, earned first team All-NFL acclaim three times and was voted to the NFL's All-Decade team of the 1960s. Warren Sapp recorded 96 and a half sacks during his career with the Buccaneers and Raiders, named All-Pro four times, voted to seven Pro Bowls, and selected to the NFL's All-Decade teams of the 1990s and 2000s. And last, but certainly not least, Bill Parcells, who turned around the fortunes of four different franchises and today remains the only coach to lead four different teams to the playoffs. Overall, he won 183 games, including a pair of Super Bowl victories. So I saved that last one for you, Bill Parcells, and I saved it because there's a six degrees of separation here with you and Coach Parcells, right? You, you were real tight at one point? Well, in 1982... I left the Hall of Fame game in the Baltimore Colts, got picked up on waivers by the New York Giants. I came in exactly the same time as Lawrence Taylor, and I was rushed into a scout team drill for the defense. I did not know the plays. And uh, Parcells was a defensive coordinator of the Giants at that time, and I was running scout team for his drill, and I ran the wrong route. And I have never in all my life been uh, chastised and had the word said about me that Bill Parcells did in my first 30 seconds of, of making his acquaintance. So. Well, this is the way I look at this, okay? After this, this is coming weekend, after the Hall of Fame game between the Cowboys and the Dolphins, you can say at one point, I was yelled at by a Hall of Fame coach. 
Okay. It's the beat's not being there, I guess, right? Like I just said, stop whining. You got a chance to play in the I'm National good. Football I'm League good. and right. in the USFL and has uh, three I'm great over, rings. I'm over it. All right, Sorry. Ken Dunning, thanks again. Executive editor from Jersey Man Magazine. I know you got a new uh, cover coming out soon. Got a new Chip Kelly issue coming out in August. And if you're interested in things that guys like, check out jerseymanmagazine.com. All right, you almost sound like you know what you're talking about. All right, folks, we're going to take our final break. When we return, we'll give you the answer to this week's trivia question. And as we return to Philly Sports Spotlight, we do so with tonight's trivia question, or should I say the question and the answer. The, the question was, can you name the last five places the Philadelphia Eagles have held training camp prior to Lehigh University, where they held it for 17 years? Will the answer? Here they are. Westchester University from 1980 to 1980, 1995, which our good friend Ken Dunnick was part of that. I actually had a chance to cover Buddy Ryan and Rich Kotite during those days. Uh, Widener University from 1973 to 79. Albright College out in Reading, 68 to 72. And look at this. You could uh, go watch the Eagles practice and then go to Chocolate on at Hershey Park from 51 to 67. And Sarnock Lake uh, up in New York from 46 to 48. But then again, back during that time, they were just coming off of being called the Steagles when they combined the Steelers and the Eagles because of World War II. So many players had gone off the battle. But uh, just a little history and knowledge for you here on Philly Sports Spotlight. With that said, that's going to do it for this offering this week of Philly Sports Spotlight. Don't forget, we'll see you back here every Tuesday night at 730 on behalf of the entire Philly Sports Spotlight crew and Ken Dunnick. I'm Phil Andrews, and we'll see you next week. But just be patient, Philly fans are blatant, that's why Philly fans are the greatest Talk about the Phillies, the Flyers, the Eagles, and the Sixers The coaches, the quarterbacks, the goalies, and the pitchers Who's hitting, who's hitting specific with all the statistics Got a handle when Phil Andrews is talking, you better listen On top of the game, a human scoreboard Yeah, you really can't blow your mind like a ceiling fan Stay on top of Philly like William Penn